Um, one thing I really wanted to ask you is like looking at the athlete first element of, of the business. So how has the kind of like day to day, well, maybe not day to day, but week to week kind of caring for athletes had to change in the, the last six months with all of the kind of uncertainty that has been? That might be kind of an obvious question. If we wanted to be specific, I guess it would be around, I think you, you mentioned you had, you, you had 11 athletes competing in stage one of the games. So so that's a big change um, and a specific big change for perhaps in the past, if they were at Madison or Carson, you can check in with them all head, uh, face to face. And, and that's been a bit different this time. Yeah, it's a great question. We ad we've adapted well. I think um, whether it's, um, you know, handling people digitally from afar or in person, um, you know, the bottom line is just making sure that we're present and, and you know, helping them any way we can. We travel as much as we can, particularly myself. I'm generally with Matt when he competes. Um, so I was in Cookville um, with Matt and Tia. Um, you know, we have others that help, um, you know, or will travel to or just be available. But, you know, the last six months have been a lot for the athletes in general. There's just been a ton of uncertainty. So we've worked really hard to, um, you know, you know, instill confidence that we're still bullish in the market we have a big position outside of just our work with athletes so you know what hasn't changed is that we know that this is something that is uh, you know people want to do people want to watch it's just a matter of getting back to it uh, you know obviously there was a lot of curveballs in the last six months six months so uh, covid started it and you know, the, all the, the chaos around CrossFit HQ yeah. um, that's worked out really well. We've just tried to support them any way we can. And that's, you know, far further than just the group we work with. You know, amidst all the chaos, we tried to take a leadership position in supporting the athletes and their decisions uh, related to the games and CrossFit. Um, and, you know, we're, we're in a really good place right now. We've learned a lot. Um, you know, we've worked, had a lot of conversations with people we care with, care for, and even others outside our system to try to just instill confidence, you know. And those guys, um, I'm really proud of everybody involved. Um, you know, CrossFit did a great job this last weekend. Uh, that was a big win to have the games happen, even digitally, and then now going to Aromas. Uh, the community needed it, um, and the athletes persevered. You know, really, uh, so did the CrossFit in, 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 a, in the same way. But the athletes persevered. They prepared. They put on a show. Um, you know, they got better, uh, as you can see. You know, um, yeah. performances were incredible. Uh, it's uh, it's such a, a testament to, to their character. Um, mm. it, it's been a wild six months. Um, we've all learned a lot about each other. And it will help us really, you know, get through these next six months to 12 months with – you know, how this looks and, you know, how do we compete? COVID's not going away today, um, you know, so there's a lot to still navigate, uh, but we're confident we can do that together. Yeah. Now, now and a number of people that I've spoken to on this podcast over the kind of last kind of few months, it's one of the things that these have been kind of unprecedented times, so the word is used a lot, but, you know, adversity breeds adaptation. And I think the CrossFit community is, one that thrives in adversity because we just like, right, that's a challenge. How do we approach it? How can we get better? How can we not only survive, but also thrive in the adversity that's presented to us? So yeah, to, I, I did catch up with the, the latest kind of episode from uh, the Buttery Bros and some of the stats that came out of Matt's performance there around when he doesn't know how fast he needs to go, that's how fast he'll go. <laughs> and, you know, to, to kind of come to do friendly fan that fast, but also to hit a 21 pound PR on his front squat as well. That's, uh, that's kind of like really impressive. And like I say, so Matt is an example there, but the athletes keep getting better. They keep getting stronger. They keep getting faster. They work so hard, you know, and I'm um, most visible to Matt on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and Tia, to some extent, Katrin, Katrin lives locally to where my home is. Um, they, you know, they all work hard they choose a painful path um you know their line of work is really painful you know if you're not really pushing your limits on a daily basis you're not you know where you need to be um you know and i can speak really specifically the weekend to to matt um you know it's uh he continues to amaze me um even though i know 
his every move and, and how he'll act. And one thing that's always consistent with him is, is uh, he brings it, it, it all to the floor and, and doesn't leave a stone unturned. You know, he, um, I think I even said in, in that episode, you know, there was a lot of questions throughout the weekend because I think what people didn't really get to see was, um, you know, you do a workout and you're like, great, I did it in three minutes and eight seconds. Hopefully that's enough. I have a lot of comfort, particularly, you know, when I'm with Matt around things like that, you know, the open particularly, you know, if Matt has um, not had this disastrous blow up in a workout where like, you know, he's failing, which never really happens. Um, and he's hit his limit. It's enough. You know, he's um, worked really hard to be in that position. And, you know, I continuously said that throughout the weekend, you know, friendly Fran, I said, that's enough. Um, you know, that you, you were at your limit, you know, uh, Diane, he, you know, was you know struggling in his last set of handstand pushups, struggling for him as doing sets of five. But, you know, in the end, um, for me, it was a data point of, yeah, that's good. You know, you're probably going to win that workout because you're at your limit. Um, and again, that's like easy to say, but man, there's a lot of hard work that goes into that. The same for all the athletes. Tia was particularly in a similar boat and we were together, you know, sort of wondering if it's enough. Like you look at that GHD workout, you know, I think initially the score came out that Kara beat her, but Kara did not. Kara was a minute plus slower than Tia. Um, Tia's workout was astounding. You know, she mowed that workout down generally for a, a person like Tia, if that's, you know, how she gets through a workout, you know, touch and go on all the cleans, really fast GHDs, no breaks on the double unders. I think it's hard for people to compete with that, with that, you know, and the same goes for Matt. Um, so yeah, they work so hard, yeah. uh, all of them. Um, and, you know, those two particularly uh, when they're at their limit and, you know, haven't sort of chosen a, 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 a bad path in a workout, uh, that blows them up, um, which rarely ever happens. Um, it's usually enough. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's amazing. And thanks very much for kind of sharing that kind of like that insight into <clears throat> the relationship you have with the athletes and the effort and, and that you see from them. And I think it's really good to see that because I think often for, for people like myself and the majority of people, what you see is you see the ability, you see the effort or you see glint. You see a lot of the ability, you see glimpses of the effort, but what you don't always see is the, the discipline and because the discipline is always there and the mindset to be able to, as you described it, live the, the tough life. Because it's easy to think it's just, you know, Instagram filters and, and PBs, but the majority of the time is the discipline, the going without this, the, the not <coughs> having that. And, and so thank you very much for kind of like sharing a, a little bit into that, that side of what it takes to perform consistently at those levels yeah that's um it's stated you know you definitely do um, hear the storyline whether you know crossfit's telling the story mm -hmm. or brands are through the athletes that they work hard it's understated though mm -hmm. um the 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 amount of work that goes into a day is astounding it's just every minute matters um those that are ultimately successful are recovering um, doing recovery work, sleeping on a very regimented schedule, mm -hmm. eating, you know, on a perfect schedule and nutrition is on point. Yeah. It's, um, listen, I know athletes globally work really hard no matter what sport they're in and they, you know, turn every stone. Um, you know, when you look at a CrossFit athlete, uh, what's different is that they're essentially blacked out every day. You know, it's one of these things where it's like, you know, the pain is, is the only guarantee on a daily basis. And um, I don't know that that's the same. Uh, mental anguish is probably consistent across every sport because you've got to push your limit to prepare to be the best at what you do. But the physical pain that these guys endure on a daily basis is crazy. And I think it's just the uh, told but uh, undertold story of, of, of this sport that's probably most incredible. Um, in the grand scheme of things. It's just at another level from a training perspective.